Hey guys, it's Fayon back with another video on the Passive Hang and today I'm going to take you through a few tools to learn how to articulate the lower spine. Now, four or five years ago, I actually went on a two-year bicycle trip around Japan and China, which was amazing, but because I was in this fixed bicycle position for so long, I developed this chronic lower back tension and left hip tension that I just couldn't really fix out uh, and solve. I was trying a, a lot of different things like nerve flossing, static stretching positions, all these sort of things. But really learning how to articulate the lower spine and access these just almost small micro movements on how to uh, position the spine have really been game changing in terms of repatterning the tension areas here and giving me some relief. So I'm really happy to share part of this practice with you guys today. I hope you get a lot out of these tools. And for those who are more familiar with this whole spinal practice, spinal waves concept, hopefully these will give you a few new ideas on how to take that practice deeper as well. So, all right, let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna take you guys through is how to initiate movement from different areas of the spine. Now, this is very powerful because in many more complex global movements, such as the classic, I'm gonna stretch my lower back, go into a pike position, you might be actually hinging and using the spine in a very, I guess, predestined, patterned way that you're habitually used to. Now, this tool is really gonna show you how to move the spine in different areas which you might not normally access. And so, for me, this has been really great for showing me how I can actually create counter tensions and then also lengthen the lower back apart from doing the usual sort of stretches such as that pike stretch that I showed you guys just then from before. So basically I'm going to just stand with the feet shoulder width apart and we're going to access the most easily mapped region for most people which is at the bottom of the tailbone. So you can place your fingers just at the bottom of your spine. You can also place your fingers uh, just where that might be on the anterior side of the body as well. And trying to keep the rest of the body relatively still, we're going to initiate movement backwards with the tailbone here, and then forwards with the tailbone. So you can see if I take away my hands, I'm pushing my tailbone back, and then I'm pushing my tailbone forward. And I'm really trying to imagine that there's like a string pulling my tailbone forward and backwards, and that the movement is initiated from that point at the tailbone. Now, this is a really important thing to pay attention to, is, is it coming directly from this tailbone point? So here, I find it helps if I put both my hands in front of my body at the point that I am visualizing. And so it'll look like this. And notice I'm trying to make this oscillation as smooth as possible, just moving forward and backwards. Notice I'm not rushing and I'm not doing this hip hinge movement like this where my head tips over. I'm trying to keep relatively upright as I just try and push my tailbone backwards and then forwards, backwards and then forwards. Notice as well that I'm not like having any jerky movements. I'm trying to make it as smooth as possible to map out that range of what is possible moving from the tailbone backwards and forwards. Like so. Nice. All right, so for most people, this tailbone area should be relatively easy to understand um, once you try it. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So we're gonna move up from the tailbone into this area of the sacrum. Here. And so you can sort of place your fingers there and it'll just sort of be around this point 
on the anterior side of the body. I'm going to do the same. We're going to think of this point now being pulled on a string in this horizontal plane backwards and forwards and we're initiating movement from this point. And this is where it can start getting a little bit tricky because your tailbone might want to start dominating. So it's going to look something like this. And you can see it's just a small micro movement. It's not anything dramatic, but even when I start going here, and I'll sh demonstrate you, this is where the sacrum is like the most extreme point I'm imagining on this side. So it's different to this where if it's tailbone, suddenly this is tailbone and the tailbone is the, the, one, the point that is sticking out the most. Now this is the sacrum. And to get to this position, I'm actually tucking my pelvis under quite hard. I have a contraction through the front side of the body to push this small part of my back backwards. And when I do that, I feel an amazing lengthening through this lower back, which is very different to any sort of normal stretches you might do, which just feels incredible. So just coming through here, pushing forward. Pushing forward might be easier to access for, again, for a lot of people given the natural curvature of the spine. Now it's this pushing backwards that really starts becoming very interesting. And notice I'm trying to limit any leaning forward of the upper torso or leaning back of the upper torso. I'm just trying to concentrate on how can I more finely define this region through here being the sacrum area and pulling it backwards and forwards. So we can continue from the sacrum and move up to the belly button region now. And so that will be from here to, to here and basically continue and do the same. So putting my hands at my belly button, push my belly button out forward. And then I try and access this part of the spine here to make this the one that is horizontally translating the most this way. Open and close. Open and close. I like to use this terminology of this open and closing because then you can try and visualize the spine making this action. And you see how I'm gesturing as well, like opening and closing. This sometimes helps we're trying to connect the dots, especially in these regions, which might be very new for you to uh, experience and try to initiate movement from. But I'm really trying to just get the movement just from this part of the spine at the belly button to go forwards and backwards and minimize movement from the rest of the other spine. So. Notice again, I'm just pushing this part of the spine. It's not the upper part of the spine. It's not the tailbone, but it's this part of the spine back and this part of the spine forwards. Cool. So basically with those ideas in mind, you can start mapping the spine all the way up. And because in this video, we're focused on the lower spine, uh, you can we can do it up to here at the bottom of the ribs and basically it'd be the same. You can choose many different points. Like I've just chosen three points there and then this fourth point at the um, bottom of the ribs, which looks like this. But the amazing part of this practice is you can go as deep as you want. So we could choose and imagine 20 points from this tailbone all the way through to the bottom of the ribs and try and do the same thing and you will find a huge amount of new discoveries in terms of the sensations, the amount of muscular contractions that you have to start accessing to be able to just oscillate that horizontal position back and forward. So a partner is really helpful for mapping out 
the areas of the spine which might be quite foreign to you. So with the help of my trusty partner, Aimee, uh, he's gonna step over here. What they're gonna do is they're gonna be tapping or placing their fingers on the part of the spine that you wanna be initiating and mapping the movement to. So if we start at the tailbone, so Aimee will be there and if she can give me just these small little taps there, I can then start getting this tactile feedback of going, oh, okay, that's my tailbone and I'm going to just move it forward and backwards and Aimee can give me feedback as well if I start moving back like this or she feels that the movement isn't being initiated from my tailbone, that I've got to either come lower or higher. So with the tailbone, as I said before, this is quite easy to access. So you're probably not gonna have too much trouble there, but then let's move to the sacrum. And so this is where we can start really getting into the details of where that sacrum is. So I'm gonna move back, I'm gonna move forward, and Aimee's gonna give me feedback going, is this actually coming from the sacrum or the area where she's tapping at, or is it being initiated at a part lower or higher? So how am I going? So she's saying it's pretty good, but say if I started going like this, your partner would be able to tell you immediately that you've got to start trying to do whatever you can to start zoning in on that area even more finely than before. So you can always get even more deeper, deeper. If any part of the movement you start slipping away and it's just the small little angles, it makes a big difference to how you can control this whole front anterior side of the body to access this articulation of the spine. So we'll go through one more, which is let's go through at that point at the belly button as well. And so if you start tapping now, I'm now going to try and really initiate that movement forward and backwards from that part of the spine. So how am I going here? It's good. Am I a bit low? Yeah, so she's giving me feedback that I'm probably sticking my butt out a little bit too much. So I'm going to tuck that a bit more and really try and more finely articulate my spine, get even more control than before. Oh. And you really have to work hard here to just access this small movement, this small articulation of the spine. Oh. Thanks, Amy. So with the help of a partner, you can really start mapping out where you are actually with the lower parts of the spine, especially if you start getting a bit lost and you're trying this movement and you're kind of like, oh, am I here or am I here? The use of that tapping or the, the light touch of a partner can give you that sense of going, oh, okay, that's where my spine is or that's what my spine is doing. And they can also talk to you as well so that they can give you cues going, all right, if you're a bit above or a bit below, you can start zoning in on exactly where that segment is. So I found that really super helpful and it's a great one where you can do that together and uh, enjoy the benefits of low back relief together. So the next tool we're gonna go through is now how to actually articulate the spine apart from these forward and backward translations that we were just practicing. So this is a bent over pelvis tilt what we're gonna do is you're gonna put your hands uh, on top of your knees. You're just gonna bend over like into this position. And then you're gonna stick your butt out and try and point your tailbone up to the sky. So you're gonna try an anteriorly pelvic tilt, uh, meaning you're gonna turn that tailbone up to the sky as much as possible. And then 
Without moving anything else, we're going to reverse that pelvic tilt and go into as much posterior pelvic tilt as possible. So we try and point the tailbone down and then try and reverse the motion to go back up and then down. So we're just oscillating between the two and you should feel when you're coming down, you're crunching your abs, there's deep hip flexors engaging here to really try and pull that pelvis into this position. And then as you reverse to the other side, you're gonna feel the lower back working very hard, a shortening of that lower back to pull that tailbone up to the sky as much as possible. You'll probably start feeling potentially your your glutes and your hamstring engage as well in this position. Notice when I'm doing this, I'm just trying to isolate this movement from the ribs down to the, um, down to the tailbone. So it's not becoming like, the, uh, like this position where the rest of the spine is moving. I'm really trying to map out this lower articulation of the spine by coming over here and then just only moving from the ribs down to the tailbone, tilting that tailbone maximally down and then maximally up. Woo! Already with a few reps just demonstrating to you guys, a lot going on there. And now you can start to see how we can really start to fine tune and start mapping this articulation of the lower spine with that movement there. The final tool I want to introduce to you guys today is using our other trusty friend and partner, the wall. Uh, so we're going to get uh, with our back to the wall here. Don't go too far away from the, roll, uh, from the wall. Closer is better, especially to start. And what we're going to do now is we're going to peel our spine onto the wall and then off the wall. And this will help teach that articulation that we're starting to introduce from this bent over position, which is quite easy to feel, into a more subtle um, articulation when you're standing. And so this is how you can start developing that beautiful standing spinal wave and really get more movement, more definition, especially in this lower part of the spine. So uh, standing to the back of the wall, what we're going to do is we're going to press our tailbone onto the wall first and then I'm going to roll my spine vertebrae by vertebrae using the feedback from the wall of what is touching my spine to tell me whether I'm rushing by just lying onto the wall like this but I'm slowly articulating my spine so it's going into that posterior pelvic tilt here, big contraction through the front of the body to then flatten my spine onto the wall here. I then try and come up a little bit and now this part of the spine is on the wall. I'm keeping the other parts of the spine from the tailbone still pressed on so they're not coming off. I'm then trying to contract as much as possible through whatever I can find through these parts just below the ribs to then flatten my spine onto the wall here. And then I'm trying to continue very slowly flattening the rest of my spine onto the wall, tucking my chin hard until all of my spine is pressed flat against the wall. Then I'm going to slowly peel off the wall, starting from the pelvis. So I'm gonna tuck my tailbone even more and try and push my hips forward without rushing and peeling a lot of the vertebrae suddenly off from the wall. So from here, I'm just going one by one Very slowly, peeling away from the wall, 
while still keeping the upper part of my spine on the wall. Continuing until I come back to standing. A lot of really hard work there. I couldn't speak for a little bit there because I was contracting so much through this portion of the spine to not rush any part of that movement and try and make it one vertebrae by one vertebrae at a time. So once that's complete, you can do it again. So coming and I'll just demonstrate once again. You just very slowly peeling onto the wall, trying to map where you accidentally rush any bits. So I felt just then I just used too much. So a lot of my back suddenly went onto the wall. So it's like, how can I slow that down, gain more control in the parts that want to rush whilst I peel onto the wall. And then it's the same process when peeling off don't want to rush anything. You want to peel as slowly as possible. Opening up the spine here, open up the ribs. Peel off, up to standing. Amazingly simple, simple, not easy movement to really learn how to articulate the spine from the tailbone all the way up to that top base of the skull. And because you have the wall here, it really gives you that feedback as to what is happening there. Are you rushing any bits? And if you are finding that you are rushing any bits, the antidote to that is just try and slow it down as much as possible through those parts that you wanna rush. So, Use this tool to start mapping out, I guess, this fine articulation in a standing position, which is going to start leading you on to other more advanced variations, such as the full spinal wave. There you go, guys. Those are some of my favorite tools in teaching and myself practicing how to map out those nether regions of the spine, which are more unfamiliar to a lot of people, or at least for me, for, I've been practicing these for a few years now. Even so, I'm always making new discoveries, new sensations. It takes a while to repattern these areas of the spine, especially if they're holding a lot of tension. Uh, maybe when you first try some of these movements, you might not be feeling or getting that much out of it at all. But my advice to you is just stick with these, be patient. Try whatever you can. Use some of the variations that I presented here, you know, with the partner today that might help you make a few new discoveries because it's going to pay you back more than 10 hundredfold. And it has for me, it always provides amazing feeling, just helping open up that lower back that I can do during the day, even when standing, sitting, which is very different to actually trying to, you know, stretch the back with, you know, rotation stretch, pike stretch, that sort of thing. So I hope you guys get a lot out of this uh, run through today. If you have any questions, like always, please feel free to reach out and hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, you can also reach out to me on thepassivehang.com. All right, I'll leave you guys with it. Get practicing and I'll see you in the next video.